welcome to join us today. It's, very, it's been a great honor here. And Mr. Nassim, yes, and after the successful conclusion of the 20th CPC National Congress, the Chinese modernization has been a very hot topic and notion that's captured the global attention. And I want to know what is your understanding about this notion and do you have any presumption about the future and the prospects of this notion? Since China is a big uh, country with a huge population, so Chinese style modernization is for the for the common man as well. So it is not just specific to a certain class. It means that a country with such a huge population has to develop, whether it's human development, whether it's infrastructure or technology, it has to bring its common people up. When we say Chinese style modernization is it def um, it's modernization or development with Chinese characteristics in it. So it's different than the entire concepts of development that we have seen in history around the world, let's say in European region or other regions. So Chinese style modernization, according to me, the modernization or the technique or uh, the philosophy of the Chinese leadership to develop and focus on the development of a common man as well in China. So it's not like what we see in developing uh, world is um, unfortunately a certain class benefits from development, not the entire population. As you mentioned, China is a country with huge population and so does Pakistan. As we know that it's listed as the sixth most populated country in the world. And uh, the report of the 20th CPC National Congress, which it was released, emphasized that Chinese modernization is a modernization with a huge population. So uh, I want to know, based on your country's uh, conditions and uh, development practices, what do you think that uh, the huge population mean to Pakistan's modernization process? We see that this population was transformed into an asset which proved uh, to the, the entire world that a nation developed within no time because historically if you see at the, the tenure and uh, the, the history of nations I think this has been a tremendous uh, exam I mean, it is an, a, a tremendous example of uh, bringing uh, or changing the lives of so many people at once so uh, when you, as you mentioned that Pakistan is also the, the sixth uh, most populous country one main thing is uh, the local uh, government or the the governance which is done at the, the, the lower levels is a great example uh, which has been uh, implemented by China. Pakistan has uh, is a country with uh, majority, I would say, of its people, uh, <coughs> middle class and lower middle class. So it means that then in the next 10 years, we have to focus on their development. And by development, I mean when we develop uh, the humans, they will become the assets and will lead uh, the country uh, somewhere where we all uh, envision. Throughout these, uh, all these years various cooperation that China and Pakistan have carried out, there are some special ones like the joint construction of BRI uh, initiative and also Pakistan actively supports China's three initiatives global security initiative, global civilization initiative, and global development initiatives. Also, uh, because of this, based on all these the political trust between China and Pakistan continues to go deepen. What do you think the respective development ideology and goals between China and Pakistan have in common? When our caretaker Prime Minister was in uh, New York, uh, he participated in the, the, the Global Development Initiative Dialogue where he spoke at, appreciated or he uh, praised uh, this vision of uh, President, uh, President Xi Jinping. But let's say the Green Initiative, let's say focusing on I mean, development, uh, responsible development, where uh, you carry on with development, but you take care of the nature as well. So you do not go against the, the, the laws of nature. So, which is also a, a great example that I would again quote, is that China has been able to do it. Let's say, for example, um, uh, the carbon emissions uh, goal that every country has set. So, China's goal has, I mean, we can see it uh, happening. Uh, let's say, shifting from gasoline engines and cars to electric cars. I mean, you can see the implementation here in China. Wherever else I have gone, it's still there in theory, but the practice, uh, the pace of practice is slow. The last one, what are your expectations towards the advantages or the opportunities that Chinese modernization process may bring to the Pakistan's economic growth and development? Ten years ago when CPEC started, China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, 
Pakistan was facing uh, uh, electric, I mean, uh, power shortages. So with the, 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 the start of China-Pakistan economic corridor and the development uh, and the, the, the investment in the energy sector, the infrastructure sector, logistics, uh, finance, uh, <clears throat> things have changed since we are in the 10th year of China-Pakistan economic corridor in our uh, economic cooperation which has started and uh, it has not just been economic uh, uh, cooperation now Pakistan and China are now cooperating in other fields as well so now we say now, uh, we have termed it that it's uh, China-Pakistan economic corridor 2 we means that we need to, to fast pace every project that comes under China-Pakistan economic corridor which like we said in the Chinese style modernization, we have to, to match the speed of China. We have a partnership which will go uh, a long way and we are very hopeful, be it the people of Pakistan, be it the, the government of Pakistan, be it the officials, be it the civil society or the media. Uh, everyone is hopeful for the next and we, everybody is looking uh, to the, 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 the other 10 years which uh, have to come. Thank you for your sharing today, Mr. Nassim. Thank you so much for having me.